After the Senate drove out the last king of Rome, the Republic would set out to slowly dominate the Mediterranean Sea. Though as time went on, the nobility of Rome would launch campaigns of expansion in the Republic's name with their own legions. After Gaius Julius Caesar had been crowned victor of the Civil War, he would be set upon by his enemies in the Senate and killed. The murderers fled after failing to get the support from the populace. A second triumvirate was formed, Caesar avenged, and the Republic divided between them. Soon thereafter, Octavian would come to consolidate his power. Augustus, first of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, grandnephew and adopted son of Julius Caesar, considered to have been one of the greatest leaders of history, his reign would be associated with unprecedented prosperity called Pax Romana, also known as Pax Augusta, which would allow his nation to be free of large-scale conflicts and enable a general expansion of its borders. After Caesar's murder, Octavius, Mark Antony, and Marcus Lepidus would form the second triumvirate to defeat Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus and the Republican faction. The triumvirate was eventually torn apart by the competing ambitions of its members. Lepidus was exiled in 36 BC, and Antony was defeated by Octavian at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. He would take the title of Princeps Civitatus and expand the number of senators, thus weakening the individual senator's influence. He would also reform the tax system, establish a standing army, Praetorian Guard, police, and firefighting service in the city of Rome. He likely died of natural causes, though some suspect that his wife Livia had poisoned him. Tiberius was stepson, former son-in-law, and adopted son of Augustus. Son of Tiberius Claudius Nero and Livia Drusilla, he would become Augustus' successor after the deaths of Gaius and Lucius Caesar. He would prove himself competent in both matters of war and state with his conquests of Pannonia, Dalmatia, Raetia, and parts of Germania, as well as punishing traitors and those who wielded authority abusively, like the Praetorian prefect Sejanus and his replacement Marco. He would outlive both his son Drusus Julius Caesar, whom he had with the daughter of Augustus's intended heir Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa in AD 23, and his nephew and heir, Germanicus, the father of Tiberius's successor, Caligula, in AD 19. After their deaths, he would become reclusive and aloof, leading Pliny the Elder to call him the gloomiest of men. Caligula was grand-nephew and adopted heir of Tiberius, great-grandson of Augustus. Born with the name Gaius Julius Caesar, he would be given the nickname of Caligula, a type of military boot, by his father's legionaries in his campaign against the Germanic tribes. After his father, Germanicus, died at Antioch in 19, his mother Agrippina would return to Rome with her six children, where she would feud with Tiberius, costing the lives of five of her children. He would join Tiberius on the island of Capri in 31 and succeed him in 37. During his initial reign, he is described as a noble and moderate emperor, though he would soon become known for his degeneracy and incoherent rulership. Few sources on his life remain today. His reign would see the annexation of the kingdom of Mauritania. He would be assassinated by Praetorian guards, senators, and courtiers, his death would mark the end to the male line of Julii Caesares. Claudius, the uncle of Caligula, grand-nephew of Augustus, proclaimed emperor by the Praetorian Guard and accepted by the Senate. First Roman emperor born outside the Italian peninsula in what is today Lyon, France. Due to his lame body, Claudius failed to hold any public office until 37, where he shared consulship with Caligula. His disabilities are the likeliest reasons that he survived the noble purges of Tiberius and Caligula's reigns, as well as his appointment as emperor by the Praetorian Guard. He is described as an able and efficient administrator, rectifying the wrongs of his predecessors through law and building roads, aqueducts, and canals across the empire. His reign would mark the conquest of Britain, seen as weak by the Roman aristocracy. Claudius' inability to rein them in led to the deaths of many senators, thus earning condemnation from ancient sources. Many believe that he had been murdered by his own wife, Agrippina the Younger. Nero, fifth and last of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. 
grandnephew, stepson, son-in-law, and adopted son of Claudius, great-great-grandson of Augustus, popular among the Praetorian Guard and the lower caste of Romans, he would be resented by the Roman aristocracy for his tyranny and degeneracy. Early in his reign, he would be guided by his mother, Agrippina, his tutor, Seneca the Younger, and the Praetorian prefect, Sextus Afranius Burrus. Though he would soon enter a power struggle with his mother, leading to her death and possibly to the deaths of both his wife and foster brother. During his reign, Rome would see victory against Parthia, Britain, the Bosporan kingdom, and followers of the Talmud. The historian Tacitus would identify the Roman people's fatigue of Nero's lack of restraint and corruption, as well as how he would continually scapegoat the followers of Christ purely due to his own demented nature. The great fire of Rome, as Suetonius contends, was instigated by Nero to clear land for his planned golden house. The Roman senator Vindex and the future Roman emperor Galba would rebel and declare Nero a public enemy and condemned him to death in absentia, leading Nero to commit suicide. Galba was the first of the year of the four emperors. Prior to becoming emperor, he was the governor of Hispania Taraconensis by Nero's orders. Throughout his life, he would hold the positions of praetor, consul, and governor of Aquitania, Upper Germania, and Africa prior to taking his retirement during Claudius's reign. Taking advantage of Vindex's failed rebellion and Nero's suicide, he would gain the support of the Praetorian Guard and be anointed as emperor. His support from the Praetorian Guard was short-lived, and his lack of popularity among the people led to his murder by his successor Otho. Otho would seize power through a coup against Galba. Of a noble Etruscan family, Otho was originally on friendly terms with Nero prior to Nero appointing Otho as governor of Lusitania in 58, after Nero had had an affair with Otho's wife. In 68, Otho would join Galba in capturing Rome, only to murder Galba the following year. He would lead a large force against the future Emperor Vitellius, who was the commander of the army in Germania, inferior at that time. Suffering 40,000 casualties, Otho decided to commit suicide rather than fight on, and Vitellius was proclaimed emperor. Vitellius was the governor of Germania, inferior prior to being proclaimed emperor by the Rhine legions on the 2nd of January, in opposition to Galba and Otho, later recognized by the Senate. Originally from Campania, he was born to the Vitellia Gens, a relatively obscure family in ancient Rome. He was a noble companion of Tiberius's retirement on Capri and there befriended Caligula. He was elected consul in 48 and served as proconsular governor of Africa in either 60 or 61. In 68, he was chosen to command the army of Germania inferior by Emperor Galba. His claim to the throne was soon challenged by legions stationed in the eastern provinces who proclaimed their commander Vespasian emperor instead. War ensued, leading to a crushing defeat for Vitellius at the Second Battle of Bedriacum in northern Italy. Once he realized his support was wavering, Vitellius prepared to abdicate in favor of Vespasian. He was not allowed to do so by his supporters, resulting in a brutal battle for Rome between Vitellius's forces and the armies of Vespasian. He was executed in Rome by Vespasian's soldiers on the 20th of December, 69. Vespasian was the fourth and last of the year of the four emperors, as well as the first of the Flavian dynasty. He seized power with support of the Eastern Legions in opposition to Vitellius. He is remembered for his fiscal reforms, political stabilization, and building program. He would lead the Legio II, Augusta, and conquer Britain in 43, and quell a rebellion in Judea in 66. After Vitellius became emperor in April 69, the Roman legions in Egypt, Judea, and Syria would declare Vespasian as the emperor. On December 20th, 69, the Senate would formally declare Vespasian emperor. His most famous building project would be the Flavian Amphitheater, today known simply as the Roman Colosseum. Through his general Agricola, Vespasian increased imperial expansion in Britain. Titus, the eldest son of Vespasian, 
Prior to becoming emperor, Titus would serve under his father in Judea and conclude putting down the revolt on his own after his father had gone to stake his claim on the empire. After besieging Jerusalem, he would destroy the city in its entirety. This achievement was awarded with a triumph and the Arch of Titus would be built. His rule in Rome would be marked with controversy when it came to personal affairs, as he had been in a relationship with the Judean king Agrippa, the second Herod's sister Berenice, for several years. Agrippa II would be given the rank of praetor. Despite this, he was judged to have been a great ruler and good emperor by Suetonius and other contemporary historians. After barely two years in office, Titus died of a fever on the 13th of September, 81. He was deified by the Roman Senate and succeeded by his younger brother, Domitian. Domitian, third and last of the Flavian dynasty, brother of Titus and son of Vespasian. He is described as a ruthless but efficient autocrat. His authoritarian style of ruling put him at sharp odds with the Senate, whose powers he drastically curtailed. After his elder brother's death, he would be declared emperor by the Praetorian Guard. His reign being the longest since Tiberius would allow him the time to strengthen the economy through currency manipulation, territorial expansion and consolidation, and massive building projects to restore the damaged city of Rome. He would attempt to conquer both Caledonia and Dacia, but would find himself unable to deal a decisive blow against the barbarians. By his will, he would establish strong moral law, leading him to be loved by the people and legions, but despised by the Roman Senate. He would be assassinated by court officials. His name would be condemned by the Senate, with Tacitus, Pliny the Younger, and Suetonius labeling him as a cruel and paranoid tyrant. Modern historians view him as ruthless statesmen who ushered in a peaceful second century. Nerva was the first of the five good emperors and first of the Nerva Antonine dynasty, proclaimed emperor after the murder of Domitian. He would begin his service to the state under Nero and later swear fealty to the Flavians, who would grant him consulships in 71 and 90. On the same day of Domitian's death, Nerva was declared emperor by the Roman Senate. As the new ruler of the Roman Empire, he vowed to restore liberties which had been curtailed during the autocratic government of Domitian. He would be unable to wrestle control of the Roman army, and after a revolt of the Praetorian Guard, he would resort to adopting Trajan, a popular general. After dying of natural causes, he was succeeded and deified by Trajan. Although much of his life remains obscure, Nerva was considered a wise and moderate emperor by ancient historians. Nerva's greatest success was his ability to ensure a peaceful transition of power after his death by selecting Trajan as his heir, thus founding the Nerva Antonine dynasty. Trajan was the adopted son of Nerva. Officially declared Optimus Princeps or best ruler by the Senate, Trajan is remembered as a successful conqueror, builder, and policymaker. His reign would mark peace and prosperity domestically. Born in Italica, in what is close to Seville in Spain today, from a senatorial family, Trajan would gain importance during Domitian. He would reshape the city of Rome's landscape by building Trajan's Forum, Trajan's Market, and Trajan's Column. He would conquer the Nabataean Kingdom, Dacia, Armenia, Mesopotamia, Assyria, and sack the Parthian capital of Ctesiphon. Falling ill and dying from a stroke in the city of Salinas, Trajan would be deified by the Senate. His ashes would be entombed in a small room beneath Trajan's column. Ahadrian was the first cousin of Trajan, allegedly adopted on his deathbed. Hadrian married Trajan's grandniece, Vibia Sabina, early in his career before Trajan became emperor and possibly at the behest of Trajan's wife, Pompeia Plotina. Plotina and Trajan's close friend and advisor, Lucius Licinius Sura, were well disposed towards Hadrian. When Trajan died, his widow claimed that he had nominated Hadrian as emperor immediately before his death. Though his succession was generally approved of, leading opposition was unlawfully put to death, which in turn made the Senate never forgive Hadrian. Hadrian would abandon Trajan's territorial gains with exclusion to parts of Dacia. After securing the borders, he would begin mass construction projects across the empire. 
he would rebuild the city of Jerusalem and name it Aelia Capitolina, after himself and the Temple of Jupiter that had been built over the ruins of the Second Temple. Due to his love of sodomy, he would have an unhappy and childless marriage with his wife. Antoninus Pius was the adopted son of Hadrian. Born into a senatorial family, Antoninus held various offices during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. He married Hadrian's niece, Faustina, and Hadrian adopted him as his son and successor shortly before his death. He would acquire the name Pius, either by his deification of Hadrian or sparing the lives of senators Hadrian had sentenced to death. Early in his reign, he would conquer southern Caledonia and build the Antonine Wall. Antoninus was an effective administrator, leaving his successors a large surplus in the treasury, expanding free access to drinking water throughout the empire, encouraging legal conformity, and facilitating the enfranchisement of freed slaves. He died of illness in 161 and was succeeded by his adopted sons, Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus, as co-emperors. Lucius Verus was the adopted son of Antoninus Pius, joint emperor with his adoptive brother, Marcus Aurelius. He was a member of the Nerva Antonine dynasty. Verus's succession together with Marcus Aurelius marked the first time that the Roman Empire was ruled by multiple emperors, an increasingly common occurrence in the later history of the empire. Born on the 15th of December, 130, he was the eldest son of Lucius Aelius Caesar, first adopted son and heir to Hadrian. Raised and educated in Rome, he held several political offices prior to taking the throne. After his biological father's death in 138, he was adopted by Antoninus Pius, who was himself adopted by Hadrian. Hadrian died later that year, and Antoninus Pius succeeded to the throne. Antoninus Pius would rule the empire until 161 when he died and was succeeded by Verus and his adoptive brother Marcus Aurelius. As emperor, the majority of his reign was occupied by his direction of the war with Parthia, which ended in Roman victory and some territorial gains. After initial involvement in the Marcomannic Wars, he fell ill of the Antonine Plague and died, along with about 5 to 10 million people, in 169. He was deified by the Roman Senate as the divine Verus, Divus Verus. Marcus Aurelius was the fifth and last of the five good emperors, son-in-law and adopted son of Antoninus Pius, grandnephew of Hadrian. He was the last emperor of the Pax Romana and served as Roman consul in 140, 145, and 161. He married Antoninus' daughter, Faustina, in 145. Marcus defeated the Marcomanni, Quadi, and Sarmatian Iazigas in the Marcomannic Wars. He modified the silver purity of the Roman currency, the denarius. The persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire appears to have increased during his reign, but his involvement in this is unlikely, as early Christians living in the second century never claimed him as a persecutor, and Tertullian even called Marcus a protector of Christians. Unlike some of his predecessors, Marcus chose not to adopt an heir. His children included Lucilla, who married Lucius, and Commodus. The column and equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius still stand in Rome, where they were erected in celebration of his military victories. He would write his book on Stoicism named Meditations. Commodus was the last of the Nerva Antonine dynasty, the son of Marcus Aurelius and the first emperor to be elevated during his predecessor's lifetime. His reign is commonly thought of as marking the end of the Pax Romana. Commodus accompanied his father during the Marcomannic Wars in 172 and on a tour of the eastern provinces in 176. Later that year, he became the youngest emperor and consul up to that point at the age of 15. During his solo reign, the Roman Empire enjoyed reduced military conflict compared with the reign of Marcus Aurelius. Intrigues and conspiracies abounded, leading Commodus to revert to an increasingly dictatorial style of leadership, culminating in his creating of a deific personality cult, with his performing as a gladiator in the Colosseum. Throughout his reign, Commodus entrusted the management of affairs to his palace chamberlain and praetorian prefects named Sauterus, Perennus, and Cleander. Commodus's assassination in 192 by a wrestler in the bath marked the end of the Nerva Antonine dynasty. 
He was succeeded by Pertinax, the first emperor in the tumultuous year of the five emperors. Pertinax was the first of the year of the five emperors. He would be the city prefect of Rome at Commodus's death and was made emperor by the Praetorian prefect, Latus, with consent of the Senate. Born the son of a freed slave, Pertinax became an officer in the army. He fought in the Roman Parthian War of 161-166, where his success led him to be promoted to higher positions in both the military and political spheres. He achieved the rank of provincial governor and urban prefect. He was a member of the Roman Senate, serving at the same time as the historian Cassius Dio. Following the death of Commodus, Pertinax was proclaimed emperor. He attempted to institute several reform measures, although the short duration of his reign as emperor prevented the success of those attempts. One of those reforms, the restoration of discipline among the Praetorian Guard, led to conflict that eventually culminated in Pertinax's assassination by the Guard. Pertinax would be deified by the Emperor Septimius Severus. His historical reputation has largely been a positive one, in line with Cassius Dio's assessment. Didius Julianus was the second of the year of the five emperors. He would win the auction held by the Praetorian Guard for the position of emperor. Julianus had a promising political career, governing several provinces, including Dalmatia and Germania Inferior, and defeated the Chauci and Chatti, two invading Germanic tribes. He was even appointed to the consulship in 175 along with Pertinax as a reward before being demoted by Commodus. After this demotion, his early promising political career languished. Julianus ascended the throne after buying it from the Praetorian Guard who had assassinated his predecessor Pertinax. A civil war ensued in which three rival generals laid claim to the imperial throne. Septimius Severus commander of the legions in Pannonia and the nearest of the generals to Rome, marched on the capital, gathering support along the way and routing cohorts of the Praetorian Guard Julianus sent to meet him. Abandoned by the Senate and the Praetorian Guard, Julianus was killed by a soldier in the palace and succeeded by Severus. Septimius Severus was the fifth of the year of the five emperors and first of the Severan dynasty, governor of Upper Pannonia, acclaimed emperor by the Pannonian legions following the murder of Pertinax. Born in Leptis Magna, he would rise through societal ranks during Marcus Aurelius and Commodus's reigns. He would seize power after Pertinax's death by deposing Didius Julianus and defeating the rival claimants Pisanius Niger and Clodius Albinus. In 194, he would conquer the kingdom of Osroene. In 197, he would wage a short war against the Parthians and sack their capital of Ctesiphon. His final campaign would be in 202, where he would expand into Africa and conquer the Garamantes. He would proclaim both his sons co-emperors, Caracalla in 198 and Geta in 209. Seeking to conquer the rest of Caledonia in 209 after strengthening Hadrian's Wall and reoccupying the Antonine Wall in 208, he would lead 50,000 men northward only to fall ill by late 210. He would die in early 211 at Eberacum, today known as the city of York in England. His dynasty would be the last prior to the crisis of the third century. Caracalla was the son of Septimius Severus, proclaimed co-emperor at age 10. He succeeded jointly with his brother Geta in 211, after ordering the Praetorian Guard to kill his brother in 211. Caracalla would be the sole ruler of the Roman Empire. Leaving much of the empire's administration to his mother, Caracalla would institute the Antonine Constitution slash Edict of Caracalla, which granted Roman citizenship to all free men in the empire. He would also construct the Baths of Caracalla, the second largest baths in Rome, introduce a new currency named the Antoninianus, and execute massacres throughout the empire. He would attempt to launch a campaign against the Parthians in 216. 
But by 217, he would be assassinated by a disaffected soldier. Macrinus would succeed him as emperor three days later. His contemporaries Cassius Dio and Herodian present him as a soldier first and an emperor second. Gator was the son of Septimius Severus and succeeded jointly with his older brother Caracalla. When Septimius Severus died in Abaracum on the 4th of February 211, Caracalla and Geta were proclaimed joint emperors and returned to Rome. Their mother, Julia Domna, who had served as a crucial advisor and confidant to her husband, was able to maintain her political influence over two co-emperors. It is said that on the journey from Britain to Rome, the two brothers kept well away from each other, not once lodging in the same house or sharing a common meal. Their joint rule was a failure. The imperial palace was divided into two separate sections, and neither allowed the servants of the other into his own. They only met in the presence of their mother and with a strong military guard, being in constant fear of assassination. The current stability of their joint government was only through the mediation and leadership of their mother, Julia Domna, accompanied by other senior courtiers and generals in the military. The historian Herodian asserted that the brothers decided to split the empire in two halves, but with the strong opposition of their mother, the idea was rejected when, by the end of 211, the situation had become unbearable. Finally, the next week, Caracalla had his mother arrange a peace meeting with his brother in his mother's apartments, thus depriving Geta of his bodyguards, and then had him murdered in her arms by centurions. Macrinus was the Praetorian Prefect of Caracalla, accepted as Emperor by the Army and Senate after having arranged his predecessor's death in fear of his own life. Born from an equestrian family, he would be the first Emperor not from a senatorial class, as well as the first to never set foot in the city of Rome during his reign. His predecessor's policies had left Rome's coffers empty and the empire at war with several kingdoms, including Parthia, Armenia, and Dacia. As emperor, Macrinus first attempted to enact reform to bring economic and diplomatic stability to Rome, while Macrinus's diplomatic actions brought about peace with each of the individual kingdoms. The additional monetary costs and subsequent fiscal reforms generated unrest in the Roman military. Caracalla's aunt Julia Misa took advantage of the unrest and instigated a rebellion to have her 14-year-old grandson, Elagabalus, recognized as emperor. Macrinus was overthrown at the Battle of Antioch on the 8th of June, 218, and Elagabalus proclaimed himself emperor with support from the rebelling Roman legions. Macrinus fled the battlefield and tried to reach Rome, but was captured in Chalcedon and later executed in Cappadocia. After Macrinus's death, the Senate declared him and his son enemies of Rome and had their names struck from the records and their images destroyed. Diadominion was the son of Macrinus, named co-emperor by his father after the eruption of a rebellion in favor of Elagabalus. Diadominion became Caesar in May 217. Elagabalus revolted on the 16th of May 218 and Diadominion was elevated to co-emperor after Macrinus was defeated in the Battle of Antioch on the 8th of June, 218, Diadumenian was sent to the court of Artabanus IV to ensure his safety. However, he was captured and executed along the way. After his death and that of his father, the Senate declared both of them enemies of Rome and had their names struck from the records and their images destroyed. Elagabalus was the cousin and alleged illegitimate son of Caracalla. He was acclaimed as emperor by rebellious legions in opposition to Macrinus at the instigation of his grandmother, Julia Mesa. His short reign was conspicuous for sex scandals and religious controversy. A close relative to the Severan dynasty, he came from a prominent Arab family in Emesa, Homs, Syria, where since his early youth he served as head priest of the sun god Elagabal. After the death of his cousin, the Emperor Caracalla, Elagabalus, was raised to the Principate at 14 years of age in an army revolt, instigated by his grandmother, Julia Maisa, against Caracalla's short-lived successor, Macrinus. He only posthumously became known by the Latinized name of his god. He would be known as the most incapable of the Roman emperors, defacing the Roman pantheon, prostituting himself, marrying four women at once, and replacing Jupiter with the deity Elagabal. 
His behavior estranged the Praetorian Guard, the Senate, and the common people alike. Amidst growing opposition, at just 18 years of age, he was assassinated and replaced by his cousin Severus Alexander in March 222. The assassination plot against Elagabalus was devised by Julia Maisa and carried out by disaffected members of the Praetorian Guard. Severus Alexander was the seventh and last of the Severan dynasty. He was the cousin and adopted heir of Elagabalus. Alexander was the heir to his cousin, the 18-year-old emperor, Elagabalus. Alexander and his cousin were both grandsons of Julia Maisa, the sister of Empress Julia Domna who had arranged for Elagabalus's acclamation as emperor by the Third Gallic Legion. Alexander's 13-year reign was the longest reign of a sole emperor since Antoninus Pius. He was also the second youngest ever sole legal Roman emperor during the existence of the United Empire, the youngest being Gordian III. Alexander's peacetime reign was prosperous. However, Rome was militarily confronted with the rising Sassanid Empire and growing incursions from the tribes of Germania. He managed to check the threat of the Sassanids, but when campaigning against Germanic tribes, Alexander attempted to bring peace by engaging in diplomacy and bribery. This alienated many in the Roman army. Alexander himself was eventually assassinated, and his death marked the beginning of the events of the crisis of the third century, which included nearly 50 years of civil war, foreign invasion, and the collapse of the monetary economy. Maximinus I was the first of the year of the six emperors. He would be proclaimed emperor by Germanic legions after the murder of Severus Alexander. His father was an accountant in the governor's office and sprang from ancestors who were Carpi, a Dacian tribe, a people whom Diocletian would eventually drive from their ancient abode in Dacia and transfer to Pannonia. And Maximinus was the commander of the Legio IV Italica when Severus Alexander was assassinated by his own troops in 235. The Pannonian army then elected Maximinus emperor. In 238, which came to be known as the Year of the Six Emperors, a senatorial revolt broke out, leading to the successive proclamation of Gordian I, Gordian II, Pupienus, Balbinus, and Gordian III as emperors in opposition to Maximinus. Maximinus advanced on Rome to put down the revolt, but was halted at Aquileia, where he was assassinated by disaffected elements of the Legio II Parthica. Maximinus is described by several ancient sources, though none are contemporary except Herodian's Roman history. He was a so-called barracks emperor of the third century. His rule is often considered to mark the beginning of the crisis of the third century. Maximinus was the first emperor who hailed neither from the senatorial class nor from the equestrian class. Gordian I was the first of the Gordian dynasty, proclaimed emperor alongside his son, Gordian II, while serving as governor of Africa in a revolt against Maximinus and recognized by the Senate. Due to his advanced age, he insisted that his son be associated with him. A few days later, Gordian entered the city of Carthage with the overwhelming support of the population and local political leaders. Gordian I sent assassins to kill Maximinus's Praetorian prefect, Publius Aelius Vitalianus, and the rebellion seemed to be successful. Gordian, in the meantime, had sent an embassy to Rome under the leadership of Publius Licinius Valerianus to obtain the Senate's support for his rebellion. The Senate confirmed the new emperor and many of the provinces gladly sided with Gordian. Opposition came from the neighboring province led by Capelianus, governor of Numidia and a loyal supporter of Maximinus Thrax. He would invade the African province with the only legion stationed in the region, the 3rd Augusta and other veteran units. Gordian II, at the head of a militia army of untrained soldiers, lost the Battle of Carthage and was killed and Gordian I took his own life by hanging himself with his belt. The Gordians had ruled only 22 days, the shortest reign of any Roman emperor. Gordian was the first emperor to commit suicide since Otho in 69, during the year of the four emperors. Gordian II. Seeking to overthrow Maximinus Thrax, he died in battle outside Carthage, 
Since he died before his father, Gordian II had the shortest reign of any Roman emperor at 22 days. Gordian's positive reputation can be attributed to his reportedly amiable character. Both he and his father were said to be fond of literature, even publishing their own voluminous works. While they were strongly interested in intellectual pursuits, they possessed neither the necessary skills nor resources to be considered able statesmen or powerful rulers. Having embraced the cause of Gordian, the Senate was obliged to continue the revolt against Maximinus following Gordian's death, appointing Pupienus and Balbinus as joint emperors. Nevertheless, by the end of 238, the recognized emperor would be Gordian III, Gordian's grandson. According to Edward Gibbon, in the first volume of the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, 22 acknowledged concubines and a library of 62,000 volumes attested to the variety of Gordian's inclinations. And from the productions that he left behind him, it appears that the former as well as the latter were designed for use rather than ostentation. Pupienus was proclaimed emperor jointly with Balbinus by the Senate after the death of Gordian I and II in opposition to Maximinus. During his life, he saw victories over the Sarmatians and Germans. He was described as being impartial in his judicial rulings. Overseeing the campaign against Maximinus, he would recruit Germanic auxiliary troops. After Maximinus was assassinated by his soldiers just outside Aquileia, Pupienus dispatched both Maximinus' troops and his own back to their provinces and returned to Rome with his newly acquired German bodyguard. Balbinus, who had failed to keep public order in Rome, had suspected Pupienus to be reading an offensive against him with his Germanic bodyguard, moved to a different part of the imperial palace. Disaffected elements of the Praetorian Guard, who resented serving under Senate-appointed emperors, would go on to kill both emperors after Balbinus, believing that his co-emperor was planning on killing him, failed to heed Pupienus' calls for the Germanic bodyguard to save them. Both were seized and dragged back to the Praetorian barracks, where they were tortured and hacked to death in the bathhouse. Balbinus was proclaimed emperor jointly with Pupienus by the Senate after the deaths of Gordian I and II in opposition to Maximinus. He was a Salii priest of Mars, senator, and was said to have served as governor of various provinces. He would serve as consul twice, 203-211, and with Caracalla in 213. Albinus was described as being a great speaker and thoughtful administrator, well known throughout the empire for his abilities. While Pupienus marched to Ravenna, where he oversaw the campaign against Maximinus, Balbinus remained in Rome, but failed to keep public order. The sources suggest that after Pupienus's victorious return following Maximinus's death, Balbinus suspected Pupienus of wanting to supplant him, and they were soon living in different parts of the imperial palace, where they were later assassinated by disaffected elements of the Praetorian Guard. Gordian III was the grandson of Gordian I, appointed as heir by Pupienus and Balbinus, upon whose deaths he succeeded as emperor. Gordian had assumed the name of his maternal grandfather in 238. In 240, a revolt would be put down, and the following year, he would marry the daughter of the chief of the Praetorian Guard, Time Scythius, who would act as the de facto ruler of the empire. Time Scythius would lead Roman defensive victory at the start of a war with the Persian Sassanid Empire, led by Shapur I. Though Time Scythius would die under unclear circumstances, Gordian could not continue an immediate campaign into Persia, with him returning and celebrating a triumph in Rome. Gaius Julius Priscus, and later on his own brother Marcus Julius Philippus, also known as Philip the Arab, stepped in at this moment as the new Praetorian prefects. Gordian would then start a second campaign. Around February 244, the Sassanids fought back fiercely to halt the Roman advance to Ctesiphon. It is during this campaign that Gordian is said to have died at either the Battle of Misiki against the Persians or at Zytha by the hands of his own dissatisfied army. Philip I was the Praetorian prefect under Gordian III, seizing power after his death. 
Eusebius, in his ecclesiastical history, held that Philip was the first Christian Roman emperor. This is repeated by Jerome's Chronicon and Dorosius's Historia Adversus Paganos. After making peace with the Persians, he would return to Rome be confirmed by the Senate and celebrate the city's millennium. He would create the city of Philippopolis and hold many Colosseum games and festivals. Throughout his reign, he had to contend with constant domestic rebellions, barbarian invasions in Europe and wars against the Persians. Offering to resign his position to the Senate, he was met with their full backing instead, namely Gaius Messius Quintus Decius. He would send Decius to the Danube, only for the Danubian legions to declare Decius their emperor and march on Rome. Philip would lose the battle against Decius and is believed to have been killed either during the battle or by his own defeated troops after the battle as they wished to appease their new emperor. Philip II was the son of Philip I and was appointed co-emperor by him. When his father became emperor in 244, the seven-year-old Philip was appointed Caesar. In 247, he became consul and was later elevated by his father to the rank of Augustus and co-ruler. The thousandth anniversary of the founding of Rome occurred during their reign and great games and spectacles were planned for the celebration. Ancient historians say that Philip the Arab and Philip II were both killed in battle by Decius in 249. Decius was proclaimed emperor by the troops in Moesia. He then defeated and killed Philip I in battle. A distinguished politician during the reign of Philip the Arab, Decius was proclaimed emperor by his troops after putting down a rebellion in Moesia. In 249, he defeated and killed Philip near Verona and was recognized as emperor by the Senate afterwards. He would rebuild the damaged Colosseum and construct the Baths of Decius, which survived until the 16th century. During his reign, he attempted to strengthen the Roman state and its religion, leading to the Decian persecution, where a number of prominent Christians, including Pope Fabian, were put to death. In the last year of his reign, Decius co-ruled with his son Herennius Etruscus until they were both killed by the Goths in the Battle of Abritus. Herennius Etruscus was the son of Decius and appointed co-emperor by him. Decius defeated Philip in battle and was then proclaimed emperor by the Roman Senate. Herennius Etruscus was elevated to Caesar in 250, then further raised to Augustus in May 251. When the Goths, under Kineva, invaded the Danubian provinces, Herennius Etruscus was sent with a vanguard, followed by the main body of Roman troops, led by Decius. They ambushed Kineva at the Battle of Nicopolis at Istrum in 250 routing him before being ambushed and routed themselves at the Battle of Bero. Herennius Etruscus was killed in the Battle of Abritus the following year alongside his father. After the deaths of both emperors, Trebonianus Gallus, who had been governor of Moesia, was elected emperor by the remaining Roman forces. Ostilian was the younger son of Decius, named Caesar by his father and proclaimed co-emperor by Trebonianus Gallus. And after Decius and Herennius Etruscus, Hostilian's brother, were killed at the Battle of Abritus, an ambush by the Goths, Trebonianus Gallus was proclaimed emperor by the legions. Almost immediately, he elevated Hostilian to co-emperor and his own son, Volusianus, to Caesar. Hostilian died soon after, either due to plague or being murdered by Trebonianus Gallus. Trebonianus Gallus was a senator and general prior to being proclaimed emperor after the deaths of Decius and Herennius Etruscus. According to Dexippus, Gallus had conspired with the Goths to kill his predecessors. When the army heard the news, the soldiers proclaimed Gallus emperor despite Hostilianus, Decius' surviving son, ascending the imperial throne in Rome. Gallus may have also ordered a localized and uncoordinated persecution of Christians. However, only two incidents are known to us. The exile of Pope Cornelius to Centum Salae, where he died in 253, and the exile of his successor, Pope Lucius, right after his election. 
The latter was recalled to Rome by Valerian. By 253 multiple revolts, Scythian raids and Shapur I's invasion in the east would cause great disaster for Gallus' reign. Greatly displeased by Gallus, the legions would proclaim Emilian as their emperor. This in turn urged Gallus' request reinforcements from Gaul under the command of the future emperor Publius Licinius Valerianus. Some claim that after an initial defeat, Gallus and Volusian were murdered by their own troops. Or Gallus did not have the chance to face Emilian at all because his army went over to the usurper. If either case is to be believed, both Gallus and Volusian were killed in August 253. Volusianus was the son of Gallus and appointed co-emperor by him. After Emperor Decius and his son and co-ruler Herennius Etruscus died in battle in June 251, Trebonianus Gallus was elected emperor in the field by the legion. Gallus raised Hostilian, the younger son of Decius, to Augustus, co-emperor, and elevated Volusianus to Caesar. After the death of Hostilian in July or August 251, Volusianus was raised to Augustus. The short reign of Gallus and Volusianus was notable for the outbreak of a plague, which is said by some to be the reason for Hostilian's death the invasion of the Sasanian Empire and the raids of the Goths. Volusianus was killed alongside his father in August 253 by their own soldiers who were terrified of the forces of the usurper Amelian, which were marching towards Rome. Emilianus was the commander in Moesia and proclaimed emperor by his soldiers after defeating barbarians in opposition to Gallus. Commander of the Moesian troops, he obtained an important victory against the invading Goths and was, for this reason, acclaimed emperor by his army. He then moved quickly to Roman Italy, where he defeated Emperor Trebonianus Gallus at the Battle of Interamna Nahars in August 253, only to be killed by his own men a month later, when another general, Valerian, proclaimed himself emperor and moved against Emilian with a larger army. Valerian was the army commander in Raetia and Noricum, proclaimed emperor by the legions in opposition to Emilian. He would divide the empire between himself, taking the east, and his son, taking the west. He persecuted believers of the Christ and was later taken captive by the Persian emperor Shapur I after the Battle of Edessa, becoming the first Roman emperor to be captured as a prisoner of war, causing shock and instability throughout the Roman Empire. The unprecedented event and the unknown fate of the captured emperor generated a variety of different reactions and new narratives about the Roman Empire in diverse contexts. Gallienus was the son of Valerian, appointed joint emperor, sole emperor after Valerian's capture and subsequent death. He would declare a recognition of the Christ, repelling his father's persecutions. He won numerous military victories against usurpers and Germanic tribes, but was unable to prevent the secession of important provinces. His 15-year reign was the longest in half a century. He would dispatch military units consisting primarily of cavalry throughout the empire, known as comitatenses. This act as unknowingly laying down the groundwork for future emperors Diocletian and Constantine I. He would also forbid senators from holding military positions, further weakening the authority of the Senate. Aureolus proclaimed himself emperor in Mediolanum in 268, but was defeated outside the city by Gallienus and besieged inside. While the siege was ongoing, Gallienus was assassinated, stabbed to death by the officer Cecropius as part of a conspiracy. Claudius II was the army commander in Illyria and was proclaimed emperor after Gallienus's death. Most of his life was spent fighting off Germanic and Scythian tribal invasions into the Balkan Peninsula. During his reign as the Roman Emperor, he would defeat a huge Gothic invasion, where his cavalry commander, the future Emperor Aurelian, would take thousands of prisoners after destroying his Gothic counterpart's force. Crossing the Alps, he would begin the conquests of the Gallic Empire a breakaway state that controlled the Roman Empire's territory west of the Rhine. He won several victories and soon regained control of Hispania and the Rhone River Valley of Gaul. This set the stage for the later destruction of the Gallic Empire under Aurelian. In 269, his preparations of war against the Vandals in Pannonia would be cut short after he fell victim to the plague of Cyprian, leading to his death the following year.
Prior to his death, he would name Aurelian as his successor. Though his brother would seize power briefly, the Senate would immediately deify Claudius as Divus Claudius Gothicus. Quintilus was the brother of Claudius II, proclaimed emperor after his death. Quintilus's claim to be emperor was challenged by Aurelian, who was proclaimed emperor by the legions he commanded. Quintilus's reign lasted no more than six months. Different sources report his cause of death as murder by his own soldiers in battle with Aurelian or by suicide. Aurelian was the supreme commander of the Roman cavalry prior to being proclaimed emperor by Danube legions after Claudius II's death in opposition to Quintilus. Born of humble background near the Danube River, he would join the military in 235, climbing the ranks and defeating invading barbarians north of the Danube and east of the Rhine. He would go on to lead the emperor's cavalry in 268. By 273, he would restore the empire's eastern provinces by conquering the Pamirim Empire, and the following year he would conquer the Gallic Empire and reunite the Rome Empire in its entirety. He would secure the Danube by abandoning Dacia, reinforce Rome's walls with the construction of Aurelian walls, and attempt to halt the devaluation of the Roman currency. He would demand that he be hailed as Dominus et Deus and earn the title of Restitutor Orbis. He would strengthen the position of the sun god Saul Invictus as the main divinity of the Roman pantheon, thus establishing a policy of one faith, one empire. Due to this, believers of the Christ would be persecuted. Due to the deaths of the Sassanid king Shapur, the first in 272, and Hormuz, the first in 273, Aurelian sought to make campaign against the weak rule of Bahram the first after he had put down a rebellion in Gaul and a Germanic invasion. Though while waiting to cross over to Thrace, he would be murdered. He is remembered today for building the city of Orléans in France. Tacitus was the alleged princeps senatus. He would be proclaimed emperor by his soldiers in Campania after Aurelian's death. During his short reign, he campaigned against the Goths and the Heruli, for which he received the title Gothicus Maximus. After the assassination of Aurelian, the army, apparently showing remorse towards its role in the death of the beloved emperor, relinquished the right of choosing his successor to the Senate. After a few weeks, the throne was offered to the aged princeps senatus Tacitus. He would restore ancient senatorial powers, though later on Diocletian would rescind all of them. After rebuking the Frankish and Alemannic invasion of Gaul, according to Aurelius Victor, Eutropius, and the Historia Augusta, Tacitus died of fever at Tiana in Cappadocia around June 276. In a contrary account, Zosimus claims he was assassinated after appointing one of his relatives to an important command in Syria. Florianus was the brother or more likely half-brother of Tacitus. Florianus was the maternal half-brother of Tacitus, who was proclaimed emperor in late 275 after the unexpected death of Emperor Aurelian. After Tacitus died the following year, allegedly assassinated as a consequence of a military plot, Florianus proclaimed himself emperor with the recognition of the Roman Senate and much of the empire. However, the new emperor soon had to deal with the revolt of Probus, who rose up shortly after Florianus ascended the throne. With the backing of the provinces of Egypt, Syria, Palestine, and Phoenicia, Probus took advantage of the terrain of the Cilician Gates and the hot climate of the area to which Florianus's army was unaccustomed to chip away at their morale. Florianus's army rose up against him and killed him. Probus was a general who would be proclaimed emperor by the Eastern legions in opposition to Florianus. Probus was an active and successful general, as well as a conscientious administrator, and in his reign of six years he secured prosperity for the inner provinces while withstanding repeated invasions of barbarian tribes on almost every sector of the frontier. After repelling the foreign enemies of the empire, Probus was forced to handle several internal revolts, but demonstrated leniency and moderation to the vanquished wherever possible. In his reign, the constitutional authority of the Roman Senate was fastidiously maintained and the victorious emperor, who had carried his army to victory over the Rhine, professed himself dependent on the sanction of the Senate. 
Upon defeating the Germans, Probus re-erected the ancient fortifications of Emperor Hadrian between the Rhine and Danube rivers, protecting the Agri Decumates, and exacted from the vanquished a tribute of manpower to resettle depopulated provinces within the empire and provide for adequate defense of the frontiers. Despite his widespread popularity, Probus was killed in a mutiny of the soldiers while in the middle of preparations for the Persian War, which would be carried out under his successor, Carus. Carus was the Praetorian prefect under Probus, who would seize power before or after Probus's murder. During his short reign, Carus fought the Germanic tribes and Sarmatians along the Danube frontier with success. He died while campaigning against the Sassanid Empire and is believed to have died of unnatural causes. It was reported that he had been struck by lightning. He was succeeded by his sons, Carinus and Numerian, creating a dynasty which, though short-lived, provided further stability to the resurgent empire. In the sphere of civil affairs, Carus is remembered principally for the final suppression of the authority of the Senate which had been partially restored under Tacitus and Probus. He declined to accept their ratification of his election, informing them of the fact by a haughty and distant dispatch. He was the last emperor to have united a civil with a military education. Though Carus was known throughout his life for his austere and virtuous manners, the suspicion of his complicity in Probus's death, along with his haughty conduct towards the Senate, tarnished his reputation before his death, and Julian, as Gibbon observes, conspicuously places him among the tyrants of Rome in his catalogue of the Caesars. Numerian was the son of Carus, and succeeded jointly with Carinus. In terms of his character, he was described as a great orator and poet, to such an extent that the Senate would raise a statue inscribed with, to the most powerful of orators. The death of Carus left Numerian and Carinus as the new Augusti. Carinus quickly returned to Rome from Gaul, arriving in January 284, while Numerian remained in the east. The Roman retreat from Persia was orderly and unopposed, for the Persian king, Baram II, was still struggling to establish his authority. By March 284, Numerian began moving westward. In Emesa, he was apparently still alive and in good health. Coins were issued in his name in Cyzicus at some time before the end of 284 but it is impossible to know whether he was still in the public eye by that point. After Emesa, Numerian's staff, including the prefect Opper, reported that Numerian suffered from an inflammation of the eyes and had to travel in a closed coach. When the army reached Bithynia, or Thrace, some of Numerian's soldiers smelled an odor reminiscent of a decaying corpse emanating from the coach. They opened its curtains and found Numerian dead. Carinus was the son of Carus and was appointed joint emperor where he succeeded jointly with Numerian. Official accounts of his character and career which portray him as debauched and incapable have been filtered through the propaganda of his successful opponent, Diocletian. He is remembered as one of the worst emperors. Arius Aper, the Praetorian prefect, Diocletian, commander of the bodyguards, affirmed that Numerian had been assassinated by the prefect and after executing the latter, he was proclaimed emperor by the soldiers. Carinus left Rome at once and set out for the east to meet Diocletian. On his way through Pannonia, he put down the usurper Sabinus Julianus, and in July 285, he encountered the army of Diocletian at the Battle of the Margus River, the modern Morava River in Moesia. Historians differs on what then ensued. At the Battle of the Margus, according to one account, the valor of his troops had gained the day, but Carinus was assassinated by a tribune whose wife he had seduced. Another account represents the battle as resulting in a complete victory for Diocletian and claims that Carinus's army deserted him. This account may be confirmed by the fact that Diocletian kept in service Carinus's Praetorian guard commander, Titus Claudius Aurelius Aristobulus. Diocletian was the commander of the Imperial Bodyguard, acclaimed by the army after the death of Numerian, and proceeded to defeat Numerian's brother Carinus in battle. 
Diocletian's reign brought an end to the crisis of the third century, but would divide the empire into the Tetrarchy, allowing the empire to be administered by his co-emperors and junior co-emperors, which had the title of Caesar. This would fail to remain as competing dynastic claims of Maxentius and Constantine would bring Rome to civil war. Diocletian secured the empire's borders and purged it of all threats to his power. He would defeat Sarmatians, Carpi, Alamanni, Sassanids, and usurpers in Egypt. He established new administrative centers in Nicomedia, Mediolanum, Sirmium, and Trevorum, closer to the empire's frontiers than the traditional capital at Rome. The Diocletianic persecution from 303 to 312, the empire's last, largest, and bloodiest official persecution of Catholicism, failed to eliminate Catholicism in the empire. Weakened by illness, Diocletian left the imperial office on the 1st of May, 305, becoming the first Roman emperor to abdicate the position voluntarily. He lived out his retirement in his palace on the Dalmatian coast, tending to his vegetable gardens. His palace eventually became the core of the modern-day city of Split in Croatia. Maximian was elevated by Diocletian and ruled the western provinces. Maximian would see many victories and defeats from the beginning of his reign as Western Emperor to his deification several years after his suicide by Constantine's request. While living in Trier, he and Diocletian would launch a campaign deep into Alemannic territory in 288. Seeking to recapture Britain and northwestern Gaul, which had succeeded, he would have Constantius go on campaign while he secured the Rhine. In 296, 298, he would combat piracy in Hispania and Berber raids in Mauritania, after which he would settle in Italy until in 305, at Diocletian's behest, abdicate to Constantius and retire to southern Italy. In 306, he would claim the title of Augustus again and aid his son Maxentius in taking over Italy, though the following year, he would flee to the court of Constantine, the son of Constantius. In 308, he would be forced by Diocletian and Galerius to renounce his claims to the throne, but he would seek to seize the throne once more in early 310 from Constantine, but fail, leading to his suicide. Constantius I was Maximian's relation by marriage, elevated to Caesar in 293 by Diocletian, succeeded as Western Augustus upon Maximian's abdication. Of humble origin, Constantius had a distinguished military career and rose to the top ranks of the army. Around 289, he set aside Helena, Constantine's mother, to marry a daughter of Emperor Maximian, and in 293 was added to the imperial college by Maximian's colleague Diocletian. Assigned to rule Gaul, Constantius defeated the usurper Carausius there and his successor Electus in Britain and campaigned extensively along the Rhine frontier, defeating the Alamanni and Franks. When the Diocletianic persecution was announced in 303, Constantius ordered the demolition of churches, but did not actively hunt down Christians in his domain. Upon becoming senior emperor in May 305, Constantius launched a successful punitive campaign against the Picts beyond the Antonine Wall. He died suddenly at Ibericum in July the following year. After Constantius's death, the army, perhaps at his own instigation, immediately acclaimed his son Constantine as emperor. This act contributed to the collapse of the Diocletianic Tetrarchy, sparking a series of civil wars which only ended when Constantine finally united the whole Roman Empire under his rule in 324. His descendants, the Constantinian dynasty, ruled the empire until the death of his grandson Julian the Apostate in 363. Galerius was elevated to Caesar in 293 by Diocletian, succeeded as Eastern Augustus upon Diocletian's abdication. He was of Dacian blood. During his reign, he campaigned, aided by Diocletian, against the Sasanian Empire, sacking their capital, Ctesiphon, in 299. He also campaigned across the Danube against the Carpi, defeating them in 297 and 300. Although he was a staunch opponent of the followers of the Christ, Galerius ended the Diocletianic persecution when he issued an Edict of Toleration in Serdica in 311. His war against the Persian invasion would be a resounding success, where he would capture the wife, 
concubines and children of the Persian king, and keep them hostage in Antioch their entire lives. As Augustus, he would have a failing out with the other emperors, eventually leading to seven different men administrating the empire. Galerius, east, Maximinus II, east, Licinius, middle, Constantine I, west, Maximian, west, Maxentius, Italy, and Domitius Alexander, Africa. The last years of Galerius saw him relinquishing his aspirations towards being the supreme ruler of the empire, though he managed to retain the position of first among equals. He spent the remainder of his years enjoying himself, but according to both Eusebius and Lactantius, he would suffer from possibly a bowel cancer, gangrene or Fournier gangrene. Severus II was elevated to Caesar in 305 by Maximian, promoted to Western Augustus by Galerius upon Constantius I's death. After failing to besiege Rome, he fled to Ravenna. It is thought that he was killed there or executed near Rome. On the death of Constantius I in Britain in the summer of 306, Severus was promoted to Augustus by Galerius. This was done as a reaction to the acclamation of Constantine I, Constantius' son, by his own soldiers at York as Augustus. Lactantius reports that Galerius had done this to promote the older man to the higher office while accepting the imperial symbols of Constantine and bestowing upon him the rank of Caesar. When Maxentius, the son of the retired Emperor Maximian, revolted at Rome, Galerius sent Severus to suppress the rebellion. Severus moved towards Rome from his capital, Mediolanum, at the head of an army previously commanded by Maximian. The army would abandon him once the siege of Rome began, leaving Severus captured and soon led to his death. Severus was survived by his son Flavius Severianus. Maximinus II was the nephew of Galerius, elevated to Caesar by Diocletian in 305 and acclaimed as Augustus by his troops in 310. A committed pagan, he engaged in one of the last persecutions of Christians before issuing an edict of tolerance near his death. He was born in the Roman Illyria region to the sister of Emperor Galerius near their family lands around Felix Romiliana in Dacia Repensis, a rural area then also in the former Danubian region of Moesia now modern eastern Serbia. He rose to high distinction after joining the army. In 305, his maternal uncle Galerius became the eastern Augustus and adopted Maximinus, raising him to the rank of Caesar, that is, the junior eastern ruler, and granting him the government of Syria and Egypt. During the civil war, he would lose the Battle of Xyralum against Licinius, flee and eventually reach Tarsus, where he would die. Eusebius states that Maximinus was consumed by avarice and superstition often attempting to commit adultery. Licinius was elevated by Galerius to replace Severus in opposition to Maxentius. He defeated Maximinus Daza in a civil war to become sole emperor of the East in 313. He was of Dacian blood. For most of his reign, he was the colleague and rival of Constantine I, with whom he co-authored the Edict of Milan in 313 that granted official toleration to Christians in the Roman Empire. Often at war with the Persians, who persisted on launching and failing to succeed in invading, as time would go on, though he would seek to defeat the Western Emperor. He was finally defeated at the Battle of Chrysopolis in 324 and was later executed by hanging on the orders of Constantine I, who had accused him of conspiring to raise troops among the Goths. Licinius is said to have likely been a follower of Christ during his early life and reign, seeing that he would handle church affairs in the same way as Constantine, affixed signs of Christ on army standards and was married to a devout believer. He appears to have turned away from Christ when he was in direct opposition to Constantine. On his death, his legacy would go down in infamy, his statues toppled and his edicts abolished. Constantine I was the son of Constantius I and was acclaimed by his father's troops. Accepted as Caesar by Galerius in 306, promoted to Augustus in 307 by Maximian, refused demotion to Caesar in 309. During much of his time as emperor, he would war with European barbarians, driving deep into their territory which had been abandoned by previous emperors. In 312, he would be baptized by either the Arian Bishop Eusebius of Nicomedia or the Catholic Pope Sylvester I. 
His proclamation of the Edict of Milan in 313 and later convoking the First Council of Nicaea in 325 would further affirm his dutifulness to the faith and pushing it to the forefront of Roman culture. He would have the Church of the Holy Sepulchre built on the site of Jesus' tomb and name it the holiest place in Christendom. He would also build his imperial residence in the city of Byzantium and rename it Constantinople, with later emperors making it the official capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. His reign would mark the shift from classical antiquity to the Middle Ages. His reputation flourished during the lifetime of his children and for centuries after his reign. The medieval church held him up as a paragon of virtue, while secular rulers invoked him as a prototype, a point of reference and the symbol of imperial legitimacy and identity. Constantine II was the son of Constantine I. Son of Constantine the Great and co-emperor alongside his brothers, his attempt to exert his perceived rights of primogeniture led to his death in a failed invasion of Italy in 340. He was born in Arles in February 316 and raised as a Christian and a follower of the Nicene Creed, which would put him at odds with Constantius II, who followed the teachings of Arian. During his time as Caesar, he would be taken on campaign with his father and would be made commander of Gaul at the age of 10 after his half-brother Crispus had died. After his father's death, the empire would be split into three, with Constantine administrating Gaul, Britannia, and Hispania as well as guardianship of his younger brother, Constance, who was to administer Italia, Africa, and Illyricum. As Constance came of age, Constantine wished to assert more power over him, but would be killed in an ambush by Constance's generals outside Aquileia. Constance then took control of his deceased brother's realm. Constance I was the son of Constantine I. He held the imperial rank of Caesar from 333 and was the youngest son of Constantine the Great. After his father's death, he was made Augustus alongside his brothers in September 337. Constans was given the administration of the Praetorian prefectures of Italy, Illyricum, and Africa. He defeated the Sarmatians in a campaign shortly afterwards. Quarrels over the sharing of power led to a civil war with his eldest brother and co-emperor Constantine II, who invaded Italy in 340 and was killed in battle with Constant's forces near Aquileia. Constant's gained from him the Praetorian prefecture of Gaul. Thereafter, there were tensions with his remaining brother and co-Augustus Constantius II, including over the exiled bishop Athanasius of Alexandria. In the following years, he campaigned against the Franks. And in 343, he visited Roman Britain, the last legitimate emperor to do so. In January 350, Magnentius, the commander of the Jovians and Herculeans, a corps in the Roman army, was acclaimed Augustus at Augustodunum, Autun, with the support of Marcellinus, the Comsre Privati. Magnentius overthrew and killed Constans. Constantius II was the son of Constantine I. His reign saw constant warfare on the borders against the Sasanian Empire and Germanic peoples, while internally the Roman Empire went through repeated civil wars, court intrigues, and usurpations. His religious policies of Arianism drew conflict with Catholics and continue well after his death. During his inconclusive war with Persia, Constantine and Constans warred between themselves until the elder's death after Constance had been overthrown and assassinated by the usurper Magnentius, Constantius II would kill him in 353. In 355, Constantius promoted his last surviving cousin, Gallus's younger half-brother Julian, to the rank of Caesar. As emperor, he would ban pagan sacrifices and issue laws against the followers of the Talmud. He would defeat the barbarian Alamanni in 354 and the Quadi and Sarmatians in 357. Julian would rebel in 360, and by 361, Constantius would fall ill and die of fever in Mopsusita. Julian the Apostate was acclaimed by the Gallic army in early 360, became sole emperor after the death of his cousin, Constantius II. Last pagan emperor who attempted to undermine the believers in Christ by forbidding them from teaching and learning classical texts, as well as empower the legions of the Antichrist who held up the Talmud as their holy book. 
In 360, he was proclaimed emperor by his soldiers at Lutetia, Paris, sparking a civil war with Constantius. However, Constantius died before the two could face each other in battle and named Julian as his successor. In 363, Julian embarked on an ambitious campaign against the Sasanian Empire. The campaign was initially successful, securing a victory outside Ctesiphon in Mesopotamia. However, he did not attempt to besiege the capital. Julian instead moved into Persia's heartland, but he soon faced supply problems and was forced to retreat northwards while being ceaselessly harassed by Persian skirmishes. During the Battle of Samara, Julian was mortally wounded under mysterious circumstances. He was succeeded by Jovian, a senior officer in the Imperial Guard who was obliged to cede territory, including Nisibis, in order to save the trapped Roman forces. Jovian was the commander of Imperial Household Guard, proclaimed emperor by the army after Julian's death. He would make peace with the Persian king Shapur II by relinquishing territory and removing Roman support from the Armenians. Jovian is remembered today as permanently removing paganism from the administration of the empire and formally recognizing Athanasius and informally the Nicene Creed over the Arian heresy. The Labarum would be restored to the army's standard and the edicts made by the apostate Julian against the followers of Christ would be revoked. Seeking to return to Constantinople, Jovian would be found dead in his tent at Dadastana, which is halfway between Ansira and Nicaea. His death was determined to have been from suffocating from poisonous fumes of the newly painted bedchamber walls of a brazier. He would be buried in the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople. Following Jovian's death, Valentinian and Valens removed any threats to their position. Jovian's son, Veronianus, was blinded to ensure he would never inherit the throne. According to John Chrysostom, Jovian's wife, Charito, lived in fear the remaining days of her life. Valentinian I was proclaimed emperor by the army after Jovian's death. Upon becoming emperor, he made his brother Valens his co-emperor, giving him rule of the eastern provinces. Valentinian retained the west. During his reign, Valentinian fought successfully against the Alamanni, Quadi, and Sarmatians. Most notable was his victory over the Alamanni in 367 at the Battle of Solicinium. His general, Count Theodosius, defeated a revolt in Africa and the Great Conspiracy, a coordinated assault on Roman Britain by Picts, Scots, and Saxons. Valentinian was also the last emperor to conduct campaigns across both the Rhine and Danube rivers. Valentinian rebuilt and improved the fortifications along the frontiers, even building fortresses in enemy territory. He founded the Valentinianic dynasty with his sons Gratian and Valentinian II, succeeding him in the western half of the empire. Valens was the brother of Valentinian I and was made eastern emperor by his brother, Valentinian retaining the west. He was the younger brother of the emperor Valentinian I. Before 364, Valens had a largely unremarkable military career. In 378, Valens was defeated and killed at the Battle of Adrianople against the invading Goths, which astonished contemporaries and marked the beginning of barbarian encroachment into Roman territory. As emperor, Valens continually faced threats both internal and external. He defeated after some dithering the usurper Procopius in 366 and campaigned against the Goths across the Danube in 367 and 369. In the following years, Valens focused on the eastern frontier where he faced the perennial threat of Persia, particularly in Armenia, as well as additional conflicts with the Saracens and Isaurians. Domestically, he inaugurated the Aqueduct of Valens in Constantinople, which was longer than all the aqueducts of Rome. In 376-77, the Gothic War broke out following a mismanaged attempt to settle the Goths in the Balkans. Valens returned from the east to fight the Goths in person, but lack of coordination with his nephew, the Western Emperor Gratian, Valentinian I's son, as well as poor battle tactics, led to Valens and much of the Eastern Roman army dying at a battle near Adrianople in 378. 
Gratian was the son of Valentinian I, proclaimed joint emperor at age eight. Emperor in his own right after Valentinian's death in 375. Gratian accompanied his father on several campaigns along the Rhine and Danube frontiers and was raised to the rank of Augustus in 367. Upon the death of Valentinian in 375, Gratian took over government of the West, while his half-brother Valentinian II was also acclaimed emperor in Pannonia. Gratian governed the western provinces of the empire, while his uncle Valens was already the emperor over the east. Gratian subsequently led a campaign across the Rhine, attacked the Lentienses, and forced the tribe to surrender. That same year, the eastern emperor Valens was killed fighting the Goths at the Battle of Adrianople, which led to Gratian elevating Theodosius to replace him in 379. Gratian favored Nicene Christianity over traditional Roman religion, issuing the Edict of Thessalonica, refusing the office of Pontifex Maximus, and removing the Altar of Victory from the Roman Senate's Curia Julia. The city of Cularo on the Isere River in Roman Gaul was renamed Gratianopolis after him, which later evolved to Grenoble. In 383, faced with rebellion by the usurper Magnus Maximus, Gratian marched his army towards Lutetia, Paris. His army deserted him. He fled to Lugdunum and was later murdered. Valentinian II was the son of Valentinian I, proclaimed emperor at age four, and accepted as co-ruler by Gratian. Sole Western ruler after the defeat of Magnus Maximus in 388, he was at first junior co-ruler of his brother was then sidelined by a usurper, and only after 388 sole ruler, albeit with limited de facto powers. A son of Emperor Valentinian I and Empress Justina, he was raised to the imperial office at the age of four by military commanders upon his father's death. Until 383, Valentinian II remained a junior partner to his older half-brother, Gratian, in ruling the Western Empire while the East was governed by his uncle Valens until 378 and Theodosius I from 379, when Gratian was killed by the usurper Emperor Magnus Maximus in 383, the court of Valentinian in Milan became the center of Italy where several religious debates took place. In 383, Maximus invaded Italy, spurring Valentinian and his family to escape to Thessalonica where they successfully sought Theodosius' aid. Theodosius defeated Maximus in battle and reinstalled Valentinian in the west. However, Valentinian soon found himself struggling to break free from the control of General Arbogast. In 392, Valentinian was discovered hanged in his room under unknown circumstances. Theodosius I was a retired general until he was proclaimed Eastern Emperor by Gratian, ruler of the entire empire after Valentinian II's death. During his reign, he succeeded in a crucial war against the Goths as well as in two civil wars, and was instrumental in establishing the creed of Nicaea as the doctrine for Catholicism. Theodosius was the last emperor to rule the entire Roman Empire before its administration was permanently split between two separate courts one western, the other eastern. Born in Hispania, Theodosius was the son of a high-ranking general under whose guidance he rose through the ranks of the Roman army. Theodosius held independent command in Moesia in 374, where he had some success against the invading Sarmatians. Not long afterwards, he was forced into retirement, and his father was executed under obscure circumstances. Theodosius soon regained his position following a series of intrigues and executions at the Emperor Gratian's court. In 379, after the Eastern Roman Emperor Valens perished at the Battle of Adrianople against the Goths, Gratian appointed Theodosius as a successor with orders to take charge of the current military emergency. The new emperor's resources and depleted armies were not sufficient to drive the invaders out. In 382, the Goths were allowed to settle south of the Danube as autonomous allies of the empire. In 386, Theodosius signed a treaty with the Sasanian Empire which partitioned the long-disputed kingdom of Armenia and secured a durable peace between the two powers. Theodosius was a strong adherent of the Catholic doctrine of consubstantiality and an opponent of Arianism. 
He convened a council of bishops at Constantinople in 381, which confirmed the former as orthodoxy and the latter as a heresy. During his earlier reign, Theodosius ruled the eastern provinces, while the west was overseen by the emperors, Gratian, and Valentinian II, whose sister he married. Theodosius sponsored several measures to improve his capital and main residence, Constantinople. Most notably, his expansion of the Forum Tori, which became the biggest public square known in antiquity. Theodosius marched west twice in 388 and 394, after both Gratian and Valentinian had been killed, to defeat the two pretenders, Magnus Maximus and Eugenius, that rose to replace them. Theodosius's final victory in September 394 made him master of the empire. He died a few months later and was succeeded by his two sons, Arcadius in the eastern half of the empire and Honorius in the west. Theodosius was said to have been a diligent administrator, austere in his habits, merciful, and a devout follower of the Christ. For centuries after his death, Theodosius was regarded as a champion of Catholic orthodoxy who decisively stamped out paganism. He's credited with presiding over a revival in classical art that some historians have termed a Theodosian Renaissance. Although his pacification of the Goths secured peace for the empire during his lifetime, their status as an autonomous entity within Roman borders caused problems for succeeding emperors. Theodosius has also received criticism for defending his own dynastic interests at the cost of two civil wars. His two sons proved weak and incapable rulers, and they presided over a period of foreign invasions and court intrigues which heavily weakened the empire. The descendants of Theodosius ruled the Roman world for the next six decades, and the East-West Division endured until the fall of the Western Empire in the late 5th century.